Hello everybody, my name is Woodcake, and this is my Silent Hill 4 speedrun. 80% category for Silent Hill 4. Um, this is my submission for AGDQ 2018. I uh, will be doing new game on easy difficulty. Um, for this run, we will be doing an in-game timer. As you can see, the timer is stopped at zero. And the real game time will be roughly 20 minutes faster of what the in-game time finale will be. And I'll be using the mouse as well. So, no further delay, let's get this going. You'll notice that the timer stops during all the cutscenes, hence the 20 minute delay. The time adds up. There's a lot of triggers you naturally have to get, especially in the first half of the game, to progress the story. You gotta look at the chest, you gotta look at the phone. Gotta look at the window. Um, you notice how quickly I examined that window? That saves you fractions of a second. Maybe even a full second. So that is what we do, and if you do that over the course of the run while you're navigating the room, it saves you good bits of time. All right. Next, we have to go to the fridge. Uh, we got to get the chocolate milk out of here, and then we have to uh, go to this door to trigger a cutscene. And then after this cutscene, can't skip this uh, cutscene, but. It's only a few seconds, that's okay. Here we grab the steel pipe, but we don't use this weapon. We only grab it because we have to grab that steel pipe for the rest of the game. Um, one good thing about this game is that um, there are plenty of times to read donations. So, for example, if you wanted to read a donation here during this tunnel, you could. So you notice I angled my camera angle a little bit. It's very, very, very minor time save to switch the camera angle to move Henry's movement slightly. It's not that big of a deal, but anything that saves even a tiny bit of time, you want to do. Go through this hole. Um, right after we meet Cynthia and trigger that cutscene, we gotta go and... Um, Grabbing the handgun is optional, but I grab it now. And you have to examine this hole. I leans on the other side of the hole, but we're not going to look. And then the phone will ring. Answer the phone. Where did you go? Hurry, save me. If you need a token, there's one here. Part of the reason that's creepy is because Henry's phone is cut. Speaking of creepy... Run past these dogs. Um, for the first half of the game, it doesn't matter if you take um, damage. As long as you don't take too much. Um, for the first half of the game, Henry recovers um, health whenever he's inside of his room. Up until, uh, up until you get to the hospital segment. And you meet Eileen. After that, Henry has to rely solely on health items. Henry, These ghosts, um, enemies, they can't be killed. You can pin them down with a sword, but there's only five swords in the entire game. And you don't get most of them until the later half of the game. So it's 
you just have to run from them. Which is which is pretty easy, as you can tell. These ghosts are not hard to get away from. You don't have to worry about Cynthia um, falling behind. Cynthia can never get lost. She will always be with you. Here, Cynthia will leave, but that's okay. Um, we're gonna go up this ladder and we're gonna unlock this door. Because we'll be coming through this world one more time in the second half of the game. And having that door unlocked will save us a good chunk of time. You also don't want to get too close to that hole. Because he can hit you through that. Alright. Right there. Um... If you equip any weapons, if you swap to a weapon, right as you open a door, you skip the animation where he's equipping his weapon, and it saves you time. Here's why the splits code escalator is built. Because you have to run up the escalator with these guys, and they try to smack you in the face. And their hitboxes are very... ambiguous. If it looks like I'm being extra cautious, it's because I am. Because it's very easy for them to hit you. He's being rude, so. He's, uh, this part's pretty RNG. Sometimes they just like to do that. So you have to be careful. Here, these, um, these enemies are called Hummers. Um, their movement is almost entirely random. You can manipulate it a little bit with your movement, but it's difficult, as you can tell. Especially when there's like six or seven of them. That's Jasper. He's kind of useless. He gets only two actual cutscenes in the game. One of the cutscenes is when he gets killed, so. It's interesting because, um. Of all the victims that Henry runs into. I believe Jasper is the only one who actually, I believe, takes his own life. I'll have to look into that to see if that's confirmed, but... I believe um, Jasper just decided to commit suicide. After he met Walter Sullivan. There are some things in this game, story-wise, that are just not explained. So, honestly, we may never know. But alright, we um, had to trigger that cutscene up there with Jasper and the little boy. And... 
now we're going to give the chocolate milk to Jasper. Jasper is kind of rude. He doesn't even hand us the shovel. The spade, sorry. He drops it on the ground and makes us pick it up. Jasper is not exactly the friend you want to have. Alright, I'm staying on the left path here. Dodge, and dodge. And that's bad RNG on the dog movement, as you can tell. Now we're going to use the spade here. Stuck on the tree a little bit. Um, hitboxes in this game can be a little weird. Part of the reason why um, some people um, find this game a little difficult to speedrun is Henry's movement is very, very clunky, I want to say the word is. Um, you'll notice I'm tapping my keys a lot. It's because... Give me a moment. I'm trying to concentrate. It's because um, Henry's movement will, he will run straight into the wall sometimes if I don't tap my movement keys. So I, most of the keys I'm tapping is the movement keys. This area can be really difficult because there's four dogs that try to charge and attack you. That wasn't too bad. Could have been better, but that dog pattern was kind of bad, so I'd say I handled that fairly well. Alright, now we gotta go through here. Um, what, the reason why we put that key away is because if you try to take that key back directly, um, you will get stuck in an infinite loop, and you won't be able to make it back to Wish House. So now we're going to take the key. And we're going to go back through the hole. Hmm. See? Very easy for Henry to get stuck on objects. Keeping pace on this game when you're um, doing runs and resetting can be difficult. Um, it is quite easy to lose time in this game. Just Not just because of the enemy movements and the RNG. See what I mean? Sometimes you hold the uh, movement key. He's gonna kill me! And Henry will run in the wrong direction. That's why you want to tap your arrow keys a little bit to make sure that Henry doesn't do that. And sometimes he'll do it anyways. We're going to run down here, we're going to grab the key, then we're going to head back upstairs. You can read some more donations here if you want. Also, um, actually I'm just going to say in terms of uh, general, general awareness, you can more or less um, do donation alerts at almost any point in this game. There's only one boss fight in this game, and it's at the very end. And there's only a couple areas that require a lot of concentration. Most of it isn't too difficult. All the parts I need to concentrate on are in the second half of the game. So. Um, there is a glitch we're going to be executing in a minute that I will need to concentrate for, actually. It's, um, it's almost a frame-perfect trick. I don't know if it is or not. That has not been tested. Alright, 
right, we're gonna go up here. We're gonna go through here. All right, now let's concentrate. Okay, I didn't get it. It's pretty difficult. Not having a lot of luck with it today. There we go. See how I didn't enter the uh, wheel turn animation? We gotta do it two more times here. There we go. See, we got it both times up there. That helps. Um, since, um, since I got both wheel skips on the top level, I skipped the Andrew DeSalvo cutscene. Now we gotta head back up. When you first play this game, these enemies, especially the twin victims, um, if you don't know what a twin victim is, um, this is it. Right there. Pretty creepy the first time you see it. But I actually, at this point, I find it kind of funny. Alright. Now we're going to go through here. We're going to remove the plate. Password's always the same. 0302. As you notice, um, the hole is gradually getting bigger and bigger. Um, many of you don't notice this little bit here, but if you look up, you'll see uh, a monster called Gumheads jumping over the rooftops of the apartment building. Here, Richard falls from the sky, but we don't care about him right now. We got a speed run to do, so... We take the key. That's one of the um, five swords I mentioned that's buried in that ghost stomach. Um, if you take that sword out of that ghost, that ghost will become active and start chasing you into the other rooms. But, um... You only need to pin down one ghost in a speed run. The rest of them you can just run around. So. Not a big deal. In the casual playthrough, you want to pin more than one. I would say three, but. Yeah, these enemy movements. See how, see how fast that dog went? Some of these enemy movements are just kind of bizarre. So, you always have to be ready for the weirdest enemy patterns sometimes. It's usually not a big deal, but those dogs can grab you and they can really cut into your time. On hard difficulty, a lot of these enemies... Go into the second elevator. Go down the slider. When you first do this section, it's um, pretty confusing, like with most Silent Hill games. That's why most Silent Hill games, I find, take a long time to beat. Because it's very easy to get lost. But once you know the once you know the path to go, it actually isn't a long game. The 
Rusty Axe we take here. It's one of the best weapons in the game. Um, again, password at the same time. Pause the game for a split second right here. Saves you a split second. Richard apparently doesn't like waiting. Um, this ghost can kind of troll you a little bit. Sometimes he can, uh, he can warp halfway up the stairs and block you a little bit. Which can cost you a chunk of time. But, uh, it looks like he decided to play ball. He just stayed in the middle of the stairwell and we just ran by him. He's usually not a problem, but lately he's been pretty rude. You can read a donation alert during this entire climb. This climb's pretty boring, so you can read a donation. a fake gold split. I will have to edit my splits later. Looks like another one, Cap. All right, and here we go into the fifth world. When you take this key, the ghost spawns. But don't pay any attention to her. She's an old lady. She needs a rest. Here we see that little kid from earlier in the cutscene. And he's knocking on my apartment door. Save the animals, people. Save the children. Here. These apartment keys give you access to every apartment except yours and Eileen's. All this running around that we do is so that we can get the key to Eileen's room because the key to our apartment don't work because it's chained from the inside. Here you can do a glitch. If you hold the aim button when you're unarmed, and you walk at the fridge, you can make Henry prioritize opening the fridge over stomping the leeches. Sullivan sitting on the stairs. He will offer you a creepy doll, and I don't advise that you take the creepy doll. We need to put that red note under the doll so that we can so that we can get the trigger to get the key to Eileen's room. Red paper right here. Don't mind the jump scare. See, there's a key here that wasn't here before. The doll key. I don't know the significance to the doll, but... Eileen screaming. Um, she was attacked by little Walter. And now we have to go to the hospital world to save her. Left, right, up, and down.
these enemies are not dead, by the way. They're actually alive. If you're playing casually, I recommend you stomp as many of them as you can before they get up. Gonna pause the game here. I try to uh, switch the camera angle around. That room's a fake death trap, by the way. It's meant to be a jump scare. Scared the pants off of me when I first did this game. I naturally don't like games with instant death trap mechanics, but unfortunately, some of the only sound home games have. Especially the later ones. Alright, um, we have kind of bad RNG here. Um, it looks like Eileen and the key are in later rooms. Alright, there's Eileen. This is why um, doing world record, world record runs of this game is so tedious. If you get the key early, you don't have to enter the room. You can just use the key on the room instead. Okay. We're going to run over here. Pull those guys over here. Um, ho hopefully they don't hit her too much. Alright. Um, and here we run into the biggest complaint of Silent Hill 4 speedruns. Eileen! Controlling and manipulating her movement is probably the hardest part of the speedrun. Forget the boss fights. Controlling Eileen is just unbelievably difficult. She can get stuck on nothing. And you have to dance around quite a lot of obstacles. Yeah, people complain about uh people complain about the girl from Resident Evil 4. Uh, Ashley, that's her name. They say Ashley's bad. You can tell Ashley to hide in the dumpster, but you're stuck with Eileen. Yeah, the the entire half of the game, from here on out, is just one giant escort mission. So, this game is... Yes, I can see why some people have an issue running this game, but it's okay. Um, this game is actually one of the easier games to speedrun. It's easy to learn, but hard to master. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Sometimes Eileen will just stop on the very bottom stair. Eileen has to be certain, she has to be fairly close to the doors for you to enter some of them. You notice how I tried to enter that door and it kept saying I can't leave Eileen behind? If Eileen is too far away from certain doors, um, you can't progress. So that is why we can't skip ahead in the game and leave Eileen. You are required to take her through the entire second half of the game. And it is frustrating. Nothing like being on world record pace just to have Eileen get possessed for 10 seconds and, you know, ruin everything. There's a holy candle down there. Um, if you're playing casually, I recommend you use holy candles, not just to exorcise the ghosts from your room. But, holy candles, most people don't know this, but holy candles also pin ghosts to the ground for a good amount of time. Same thing as we did with the uh, refrigerator. Hold the aim key and press the action key. And Henry will go right into the hole. All right. We get a filthy envelope after we come back to the room. We need this toy key and you'll see it in a minute. Okay. 
Okay, she's close enough. We can go on ahead. This, um, this trick here is very ambiguous. In fact, I still am not sure if this is RNG or if this is entirely based on Eileen's positioning. But half of the time when you go back to that turnstile to get Eileen, we leave her there because she gets in the way. Half the time you go back, um, she'll be on the ground incapacitated. But the other half, she'll be just fine and not take a single point of damage. Yes, Eileen um, cannot be killed, but the more damage she takes, she will start to limp. And... Oh, we need these pistol bullets. We need these pistol bullets for later. Alright. Now what we have to do, we have to go through this hole. We got the dirty key, so we, um... The dirty coin, sorry. So now we have to go use the dirty coin in the sink. And here is the last time in the game we will use the chest. Oh. We're going to put these away and that is the last time we will use them. Go up here and use the uh, we have to go over here, run all the way back, and use this coin. Okay. Oh, there she is. I was wondering why uh, Cynthia wasn't here. Alright, now we got the murder scene key. Now we can run down here. Um, gotta be careful. These ghosts can easily block you and grab you. Right, I'm gonna equip the handgun here again. Don't hear Eileen panting, which is a good which is a good sign. If you hear her like panting or breathing heavily, um, that means she's on the ground and you have to wait for her. Okay, she's not limping. That's actually that's good. Um it's entirely optional to kill those monsters on the wall escalator, but the reason I take time to kill them is because I have to come back down. Um, it's technically faster to go down the escalator on the other side, but since the camera angle, as you can see, is not friendly, um, I just choose to kill the top three and leave the last one. The last one doesn't hit Eileen because... By the time Eileen gets here, 
I'm already um, through the escalator. Oh. I have no idea how he did hit me, but I'm glad he didn't. Um, I've never seen that ghost spawn there before. That surprised me quite a bit. I'm just glad he didn't hit me. Cynthia's way down there. That's good RNG. Sometimes she can block the way. This time, um, with the exception of having some bad enemy cycles, some bad enemy movements, act this actually wasn't a bad split. I'd say that, um, I'd say that world actually went pretty well. Um, enemies, although I will say on this as a side note, enemies have more health overall and they move faster and they do more damage on hard difficulty. They're literally just worse in every way. Here we go. And here we are back in the forest world. If you go if you go over to the right, you will notice that uh, Walter's coffin is actually dug up. You don't want to forget any body parts here because it takes a considerable amount of time to go back and grab them. If you run too far away from these dogs, they'll dash at you and they'll try to grab you or bite you like that. So if you zigzag a little bit, you can usually get out of their attack pattern and these dogs have a hard time turning. So as long as you're on their side or you're behind them, um, usually they can't uh, grab you cleanly. Walter has a chainsaw here, but you should almost never get him with a chainsaw. His pistol's much worse. I don't believe Walter's chainsaw kills you. I think it just does a lot of damage. Okay. Gonna grab the doll leg. Walter. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm stutter stepping there so that um, I manipulate the um, Hummer's pattern a little bit so he's less likely to hit me. Because Henry will flinch. There's a chain there that you can grab for Eileen if you're playing this casually. I don't believe that can kill you. I think I've tried once and it wouldn't let me. And here we see Jasper. And he's actually less threatening than the other ghosts. I feel they should have um, allowed Jasper to be more threatening as a ghost. You can pretty much just ignore him. The only thing about the Jasper Ghost is that he goes through walls really quickly. Um, the camera is also not moving like this at random. I'll remind you again, this is me moving the camera sometimes. If you move the camera like this, it moves, um, it makes Henry turn just slightly. If I use the arrow keys to make Henry turn, he takes these real, uh, wide, clunky turns. So, I've said before, movement in this game can be very picky. So, 
so it's very difficult controlling Henry when you first get into this game. Just a casual reminder, at any point that you want to do donation alerts during this game, please go ahead. You can do donation alerts pretty much this entire level. Here our inventory is full, so we're going to get rid of these four body parts. Oops. Sometimes um, I get an input eaten there, and I examine the wheelchair man on accident. It's okay. Like I said, um, this game, there's not a lot of big time losses in this game. In, in a lot of games, you miss a glitch or a trick, you can lose minutes at a time. Like messing up your step count in Final Fantasy and other examples. We grab this pickaxe and we'll use it in the final boss fight. I recommend you don't use the pickaxe unless you just really want to have fun. Because the pickaxe is quite a slow weapon. We have to grab this medallion, light this torch, and we'll be on our merry way. Let the twin victims frighten you. They're actually not that threatening. As long as you keep moving. And they flinch in one hit from any weapon. They do a lot of damage on hard difficulty. Three to four bars, I believe. Alright, here we're going to wait for Eileen. This is bad RNG. See how slow Eileen's making her way up the stairs. Eileen can get stuck on these stairs, so what we do is we just run here for a second. And then we run through the door. Um, it's possible that Eileen can, Eileen can get possessed, but as long as she's um, not doing a full-on possession, you can smack her out of it. And I don't believe smacking her does uh, any damage. So, If Eileen doesn't take a lot of damage and you do the final boss fight relatively quick... Hi, Walter. Um, you can save Eileen. Um, this strategy is something that I started doing on my own. It's part of the reasons why um, I get the good endings, usually. Because most, um, up until I started running this game, and a lot of runners still do this, but a lot of runners would just um, leave Eileen out here and go through this door um, right here. And what this does is it leaves Eileen outside with Walter, and she takes a ton of damage. Because if you leave Eileen out with Walter or any enemies, she takes a lot of damage. Even if it's just for a second. So you don't want to leave Eileen in a room with enemies. Or a room where enemies can show up. We're going to load the silver bullet into the gun. I'm equipping the torch again in case any more Hummers come down here. There we go. I don't want them to hit me or Eileen. We gotta wait for her anyway, so we might as well take them out. Okay, and... Oh, yes. We do this, okay. One step ahead of myself. We don't do that just yet. 
Luckily, that doesn't cost any in-game time, so in a speed run, that wouldn't be an issue. Okay. Now what we have to do is we have to go through here and we have to grab um, Andrew's shirt, which is in the execution. Here, we grab his shirt. It's got something written on it in wax. Um, if you're relatively new to the game, I recommend you grab this. It only takes a second to grab. And now we go through this door. If you want, you can put more items away in that uh, chest, but I wouldn't recommend it because you don't need to. You will have one extra inventory slot. All right, I'm gonna wait for her. I'm gonna wait for her. Sometimes she can't get stuck there. If I remember correctly, Andrew is chanting something along the lines of, uh, gather forth the, uh, white oil and the blood of the ten sinners, which is one of the holy sacraments in one of the notes I read earlier. There we go. Get to him. Alright, I'm gonna use my drink now. Clear to the door space. Um, up ahead, right after this next room. Um, this is where I've lost many runs, because if, if Eileen gets downed in this next room coming up, you can lose just an enormous amount of time. The safety strategy here would be to use the pickaxe, but I think it'd be more exciting to just run through. Worst case scenario, um, if this trick fails, I'll just equip the handgun and shoot the twin victims off by lane. But here we go. And she got possessed. That's horrible luck. That is very unfortunate. Through. You see, that room can be quite bad. Even on easy difficulty, they hurt. Um, it was a good thing I dodged those enemies as long as I did. If I if I didn't dodge them as well as I did, I could have died there. But uh, yes, worst case scenario, um, that actually would have worked if Eileen did get possessed there, but. The chances of Eileen getting possessed right there with the damage she took is probably about 5%. I've only seen it happen one other time with her current health. So that was just terrible luck. Eileen is the reason why this game is difficult to run. She cost me, I would say, 20 seconds there, maybe. I really, really didn't want to use the handgun bullets because I'm using them for uh, the mini boss fight coming up after this room, or after this area. If I absolutely had to, I would. <gasps> but... I was trying to avoid that scenario if necessary. Um, 
my health should be all right. Um, what we just did here was a glitch. Um, that fence doesn't load, but Eileen is still able to traverse that area. These wheelchairs usually don't target Eileen, so... They can knock Henry down, but they won't knock Eileen down. They can damage her, they just can't knock her down. And this is why... Um... This is where the time loss kicks in. If Eileen gets slowed to a limp like this, it costs... Quite... A large amount of time. Also, um, you don't have to wait for Eileen to come around that fence. The password changes here because um, the memo on that table says the password changes. Alright, there's a lot of Hummers here, but since Eileen's limping, we can just take our time and take them out. They can be quite annoying. All of my time loss, um, in the last, and this split in the last split is because of Eileen. Please, don't leave me alone. All right. I guess she must have started running, so I can start running. You don't have to worry about Henry's health too much here, as long as it doesn't go below like 20%. The Hummers don't do too much damage on easy, but they do slow you down. See how I stop and I move? You can avoid the Hummers a little bit. those two okay this is a this is a strategy I myself developed and it is much faster than the old strategy which was to use the hand axe this is bad RNG We're going to go and okay I'm going to do this and he's able to touch this and swing not those two there we go. That was unfortunate. That happens sometimes. Sometimes that one will come to life. I'm going to wait for him. Oh, that's very bad RNG. Alright, that's fine. That was very bad um, RNG, but since... Um... This new strategy makes you lose less time. I could have lost so much more time if I didn't use this uh, new strategy. Although I shouldn't really call it new. This strategy is 10 months old now, maybe? No, no, maybe not that old. I believe six months. But I got tired of using the hand axe because that boss has iframes, or that mini boss. And uh, if you keep swinging at him at the, with the axe, if you hit the boss during his iframes with that axe, um, he'll smack you in the face and go back up the wall. And it costs you like 20 seconds. 30, 35 seconds if you're really unlucky. And I got tired of that happening, so I just decided, you know what? Why don't I try taking 24 handgun bullets and see how that works? It actually works quite well. You can hit two of them at once if you take the right angle. So I decided, you know what? This makes the one truth fight, even with bad RNG, makes it a lot less painful. Um, Eileen's very slow here, so again, we're gonna lose a lot of time on the split. 
RNG can just really dig into your time. But it happens. There's, there's a note there. Ignore it. In this apartment, you have to read every note in the apartment. So... We are coming up towards the end of the game. Um, this part's pretty boring, so you can go ahead and you can read donations here. The whole time you're in this room, you can just read donations. Grab the pickaxe of hope. We got the pickaxe of hope and the pickaxe of despair. Alright, we used the pickaxe of hope and we broke open, we broke open this wall. Alright. Pause the game. If you pause the game, you can wait for it to load. And we use the keys of liberation here. As you can see, 25 seconds lost because um Eileen decided to be Eileen. <gasps> Luckily we don't need Eileen to follow us here. So we can... Oh, that was bad RNG. I still exploited it. Vulture's there. He can shoot you if you take too long. So, you don't want to take long here. If you don't move to this room quick enough, she can block you off and grab you. But you don't see her anymore. You always have to be careful with some of these enemies. Walter's in this room. Don't run through that. If it's your first time playing Silent Hill 4, I assure you that you're probably going to run through that door. And you're probably going to get hit. These are, um, semblance of, these resemble Walter's dad. And each one says a different quote. And, oh, shut the hell up. You can tell that, uh, Walter's dad is not nice. Get out of here. I can't stand it anymore. Walter's dad's not a kind guy. He's actually very abusive. says something along the lines that she feels sorry for Walter. Um, the cutscene that triggers in here with Eileen depends entirely um, it depends entirely on how much health Eileen has. my health because you get healed the full on the way back. I've 
I've actually gotten stuck on quite a lot of enemies this run. That's actually quite rare. Okay, we're going to this uh, pickaxe animation has about... It takes two seconds to equip that pickaxe. But if you enter a door as you're equipping the axe, you skip the animation. Like I said, it's not a big time save, but when you're going for world record, every second is important. There have been times I've gotten world record by fractions of a second. Here we have to put the umbilical cord into this giant monster. I believe that is Walter's real body. But I don't know the specifics of that. I'm not very well versed with the Sound Hill story universes. Grab four spears at a time, that's the most efficient way to do this. I'm probably gonna get shot here, but that's okay. Okay, that was good, I didn't get shot. Um, sometimes he can take time and he can shoot you. And uh, other times he'll do it right away. I got fortunate on that part. Henry has a lot of invincibility frames when he's ripping these spears out. So don't worry about him hitting you. Um, every time that camera angle snaps to Eileen, um, Henry's movement changes, which is why another one, another reason. I don't like that. Literally everything Eileen does just makes this game difficult to do. So. It can be dealt with, it's just difficult. All right, here's how you beat the boss fight quickly. Right there is where you ideally want him to be. You don't have to push him much since he's already in the position. Wait for him to backdash. Don't stand too close or he'll spin. Walk up to him. All right, he'll probably backdash again. One. Okay, that's fine. ladies and gentlemen. I even managed to save Eileen despite her taking quite a bit of damage. Even with really um, bad RNG on this run, on a side note, I would say that 51-17, I mean, for me, that's a bad time, but I'm really, I'm, I'm really competitive, so if my run's not really good, I think it's bad. But 51-17 with the luck I've had, I would say is actually not bad at all. Every aspect of RNG I've had was just very unfortunate. Lost a minute at one truth because of the bad Eileen possession. I lost a lot of time at the hospital because I had very bad key and Eileen positionings in the rooms. Some of the enemies didn't cooperate. And Eileen was limping. 
and uh, the One Truth and the Escape splits. So that was another reason I lost a large chunk of time. And we still managed to save her, even though she wasn't very kind to us. Dialogue in this cutscene changes whether or not um, you purified your room. If you haven't purified your room and you save Eileen, you get the mother ending, <laughs> where you do save Eileen. Thanks. But she's still partially possessed, which is why she wants to return to the apartment. <laughs> well, I guess I can go back to South Ashfield Heights now. about you, but, um, I don't want to go back to my room. Anyone want to clean my room for 50 bucks? Come on. I know you want to. that I've always appreciated about this game is how good its soundtrack is. The Silent Hill soundtracks 1 through 4 have never
the in-game time is 51.57. And this concludes my AGQ, AGDQ submission for 2018. Um, thank you for taking the time to uh, review this submission. And I'm glad you took the time to watch this. Thank you.